Hey, I'm Jake from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Yandere Simulator. Apparently, this is one of the last builds before Osana is in the game. There's a few things that I want to check out in this new build, like getting the student council fired from the council. We can now put bodies in lockers outside of the Alphabet Killer Challenge, and there are six new Headmaster tapes. We're going to listen to all of them right now in this episode. Are you guys cool with that? You down with that? Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go! All right, so it says that the build is from May 15th, but I see the new stuff right over here. Like, I see all... All these little what are these called again damn I'm a dumbass I haven't been in school for a while what the hell are these called little pamphlet reading materials but here's what we're gonna do right now guys we're gonna get the new headmaster tapes there's six new tapes so we got a lot to get through right now and the student council thing to get them fired from student council to make them a regular student it's gonna be a feature in the game I believe but right now it's only in mission mode and there's supposed to be voice lines but there's no voice lines yet hopefully you guys Quit understood it. all of that can you stop but anyway you boys got the tapes right here numbers three four five seven eight and nine are the new ones so we're gonna play number three right now and I'm gonna try guys I'm gonna try my fingers are Cross my fingers and my butt cheeks are crossed. I'm not gonna talk that much, but no promises. <sighs> wow. Wow. Can everything really collapse this easily? Cameras, interviews, police. I don't want this to be my life. The past few years were perfect. Why did this have to happen? Because you're a fuckboy? It's it's not like it was my fault. Or was it? It was. Come on, I, let's be real. It's always been I your guess fault. I understand Since why you came out the womb. The blame on me. It's, it's my school. I'm responsible for it and everyone inside of it. But how was the I supposed to? How did he go to school at Chuckles University? How could I have seen this coming? What could I have possibly done to have prevented this? A murderer. A killer. In my school. He talking about Yan Chan's mom. That's Those facts. girls who disappeared. I don't want to admit it, but it fits. Fits like OJ's glove. Those missing girls are probably dead. Dead. I... Was there anything I could have done? Could I have stopped this? Could I have saved them? If I was more vigilant more strict with background checks. I hate to say it, but yeah. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Have metal detectors and security cameras in every hallway? Do a mental health check on every student every hour? How do you prepare for this? You can't. It's... It's... If, if someone is just crazy, just insane, then you... You're, you're screwed. Guys, voice acting it's, right now is on point. It's not your fault or, or anything. It just... It happens because they're just, they're just this, this crazy, screwed up person. It's not, it's not your fault if this happens. It's not your fault. It's not, it's not my fault. Oh, it's your fault. It is your fault. Voice acting's on point, though, I'm not gonna lie. But we're about to go to Headmaster Tape number four, and this time I'm gonna try not to talk more than I did last time. Psych! What a goddamn disgrace! Innocent? Innocent! Innocent my ass! She's the culprit! She did it! That girl, that monster! I've never seen someone so goddamn manipulative! So goddamn evil! She fooled them all. Every single one of them was dancing in the palm of her hand by the end. What a, what a farce. People are dead. Young people who had promising futures whose lives I was responsible for. Hey, they weren't that promising, let me tell you that. She did it. She did it. She's the only one who could have. That blood is on her hands. And now... Now she walks free. That conniving little... And I'm expected to... To let her back in the school. Stand on a stage and hand her a diploma? Mr. Psycho told me to let it go, but I... I, I can't. I can't let this go. She murdered people and got away with it. I can't believe... God damn, this is just... 
This was supposed to bring closure. This was supposed to close the chapter. This was... God damn her! God damn her. Yeah, he's big mad. He's big, big mad. Headmaster got a big, big head and he's big, big mad. We're gonna go to Headmaster Tape 5 right now. <laughs> I didn't realize how pathetic this was until I hit the record button. You just now realized it? Uh, I think we all knew. We've been new. Everybody watching has been new. I want to talk about. But the only people around me are my colleagues at work. I can't show weakness in front of my subordinates, so if I want to talk and have someone listen, then I have to use this. A tape recorder. God, the problem is enrollment is dropping. The past few years weren't too bad, but now, for the first time since the school opened, enrollment is actually lower than the previous year. Because Yanchan's mom killing everybody off! This was... This was the only good thing I had going for me. And now, I'm watching it die. Yanchan's mom doing the alphabet killer challenge. That's why nobody's at school. the exact moment when the decline began. That trial. Yanchan's mom trying to get that, that genocide ending. Damn trial. As soon as, as the media started calling this place the murder school, our fate was sealed. The only suspect was found innocent. So the public believes that the culprit is still at large. Nobody wants to attend a school where a serial killer might be running loose. But that... That was six years ago. Six years. We haven't had any incidents since then. It's safe here. What am I supposed to do? Hang a sign on the front door of the school that says, We've gone six years without a murder. <laughs> you can all come back now. <sighs> we had momentum. We had an upwards trajectory. We were rising, soaring. We were on the road to being as internationally renowned as Harvard or Yale. Right. But that trial... It... it killed the momentum. And once you lose momentum, it's almost impossible to get it back. <sighs> Sometimes I wish... Sometimes I wish that journalist had never said anything. If he'd kept his mouth shut, just... just let her get away with everything. There never would have been a media circus. Just some mysterious disappearances that would have been forgotten in a few months, but no, he had to drag us all into a big scandal. He was just doing his job, damn. If only some some random person would just be found guilty for all those murders, then maybe, maybe this notion of a serial killer running loose around academia would finally go away. Once again, people just doing their job, and they did a good job too, because I think they got the right person. What am I saying? I don't really mean any of that. It's just, it's this, this whole situation is just, it, it has me, it, ugh. Is he recording this I'm whole wrong. thing while taking a fat no. dump? He's always going it's like, It's not the uh, journalist's uh, fault. Uh, it's not the court's uh, fault. Uh, I? It's not even my fault. Sorry, that last one wasn't a poo moan. This is her That was a fault. different kind of moan. It's all her fault. That's what they all say. That was a long tape. But we are going to go to 7, 8, and 9. So the last three are in a row. Let's start with number 7, obviously. Here it is. 15 years. Damn. That's how much time has passed. 15 years, boy? 15, 15 years still recording years. on cassette tapes? Upgrade to CD! 15 years watching it all spiral downward. 15 years me listening to Never this bull. To pull out of that nosedive. 15 years without closure. Without justice. Should have called Phoenix right. What would my life been like if I'd never taken this job? Probably wouldn't have gray Probably hairs on your balls so now. fast. Children. Uh-huh. 
There's no room for anything like that. Not with Academy taking up so much of my time. Even if I did have a family, I wouldn't be a part of their lives. I'd be too busy with Academy. I'd make a terrible husband. A terrible father. I sacrificed the best years of my life for this school. And what did I get in return? Wrinkles. On your nuts. And hair loss from all the stress. A big fat gut. Big fat gut. I don't even recognize the man in the mirror anymore. Sure, I've made money. But what use is money when I never have time to spend it? I don't even know what I'd use it for. I never have enough spare time to develop a hobby. Get some hose. Well, Just a suggestion. I never said it was a good suppose one. Suppose I do have one hobby. I asked myself, what good is being the headmaster of a school? What opportunities do I have that nobody else has? Only one thing came to mind. Something taboo. But once the idea's in my head, it was impossible to just stop thinking about it. Eventually, I just couldn't find a reason to resist the temptation. It's not like I have anything left to lose. It's not like my life could get any worse than it already is, so... I gave it a try. And you know what? I don't even feel guilty about it. You see... Filming someone does absolutely no harm to them. No harm whatsoever. It's not as though I post the videos online or anything like that. It has zero impact on their lives, so... What's wrong with putting a few cameras around? At this point, I don't even care if I get caught. Actually, the risk of getting caught makes it a little more thrilling. And even if I did get in trouble... At least it would shake things up a bit. My life would finally change in some way. And for that reason alone, I would be happy. It's a win-win. I just wish I'd thought of this sooner. Okay, hopefully he touches more on why he was recording in tape 8, so let's go. Whenever I sit in front of Mr. Psycho, and give him an update about Academy. I expect him to be furious with me. The school's reputation and enrollment have both been declining for almost three decades, despite my efforts to turn them around. That's true. It's not that many students at Academy Mr. High right Psycho now. Mr. Psycho has every right to chew my head off, but he doesn't. As a matter of fact, he seems quite indifferent towards Academy as a whole. Our weekly meetings feel like a formality, and nothing more. Something we do merely because it became routine. I get the impression that he couldn't possibly care any less about Academy, and keeps it operational purely because closing the school would reflect poorly on Psycho Corp. Or perhaps because the school had become something of a monument to his missing daughter. Hmm. Perhaps he's more sentimental than he looks. If Academy's enrollment numbers continue to drop at their current rate, less than 100 students will be attending the school next year. Oh yeah, there's like 70-something, right? 77, point, 78 it's students? it's clear that nothing I've tried over the past 30 years is going to save the school's reputation. I don't so, know how I'd feel about the school being filled with randoms. Practically nothing left like to lose. Like nameless students? Kind of like a Persona 5? Radical. Actually, Mr. all personas. Psycho. Persona 3, 4, 5. A complete rebranding. My research has shown me that Academy's declining popularity is directly connected to the school's reputation for notoriously difficult entrance exams and needlessly strict rules. The last thing I'd want is to allow the school to fill up with imbeciles and degenerates. But it has become obvious that the school's reputation will never recover unless sweeping reforms are made. I presented Mr. Psycho with a list of everything that would make the school a more welcoming environment. 
allowing students to style their hair, wear makeup and accessories, customize their uniforms, bring smartphones to school, enter romantic relationships, Wait, they access can't do the that rooftop, anyway? and so forth. I even proposed making the entrance exams a little less difficult and lowering the tuition fees. I truly didn't know how Mr. Psycho would react. On one hand, he seemed apathetic about Academy. On the other hand, I was proposing a complete reversal of everything that Academy stood for. After I concluded my presentation, he sat in silence for a while. I wasn't sure if he was giving my proposal deep consideration, or simply pondering whether or not he cared at all. Eventually, he shrugged his shoulders and simply said, Give it a try. I'm not sure whether or not the rebranding is going to be a success, but for the first time in years, I feel excited. Like I actually have something to look forward to. The tedium of the last few decades had become unbearable. And these big, drastic changes are exactly what I needed to break up the monotony. I'm eager to see what kind of crowd these reforms will bring in. Here's to a new chapter in the story of Academy. We got one more Headmaster tape, lucky number nine, so here it goes. Huh. Oh my god, it's six minutes and 26 well, seconds? Right, you well. That was the weirdest day of my life. In the past 30 years, I've had over a thousand meetings with Mr. Psycho. When I walked into his office today for our weekly meeting, I could immediately tell that something was very wrong. Everything about him, posture, expression, demeanor, was completely different. He was slouching low in his chair, staring blankly at a wall. Didn't even bother to greet me as I walked in. More importantly, his son, who had been present for every one of our meetings over the past three decades, was not there. I asked, will your son be joining us today, to which he simply replied, there is no reason for that anymore. As I took my seat, I asked him if anything was wrong. He didn't reply. The heavy atmosphere of the room made me feel uncomfortable with the idea of attempting to advance the conversation. So I chose to remain silent until he was ready to talk. As it turned out, I would be waiting for quite some time. The silence lasted for about 15 incredibly tense and uncomfortable minutes. Jesus. When Mr. Psycho finally did speak, I would have at least farted to break the tension. Rambling about I hate awkward Okinawa. silence. He spoke of his experience as a soldier during World War II. How he volunteered to fight at the age of 17. How a bomb hit his dormitory. How he spent hours buried underneath rubble, staring at the corpses of his dead friends. He said... He still sees them on the back of his eyelids every time he closes his eyes. He told me that buried underneath that rubble over 70 years ago, he swore an oath to punish the world for killing his friends. He swore to revive Japanese nationalism and expand the Japanese empire until it covered the entire globe. That's why he started his company. That's why he spent his life building the greatest conglomerate the world has ever known. That's why he toiled for over half a century until he had become the richest man on earth. It was all for the sake of building up enough power and influence to instigate a war. A war that he would throw all of his money and resources into until he had achieved the complete annihilation of every country that fought against Japan in World War II. But something happened that he didn't expect. Globalization spread Japanese culture across the face of the planet. Japan's former enemies now enjoy friendly relations with Japan. 
They eat Japanese food, watch Japanese animations, uh, play Japanese video games. Uh, the process was sped up by his own inventions and innovations. There's a psycho product in every home. I'm a psycho. He can't find the motivation to go to war anymore, knowing that he'd be blowing up his own loyal customers. He dedicated his entire life to setting the stage for a blood-soaked military victory. But in the process, he inadvertently achieved a slow, pacifistic cultural victory. By now, almost everyone who pulled a trigger or launched a bomb during World War II was dead or elderly. So revenge had lost all meaning. You can still get revenge. Instead Just of feeling like pride a retirement for accomplishing home. more than any other man in history. He just felt like he had failed his dead friends. You know, just karate chop some old dude in a wheelchair. After his long, rambling speech came to an end, he returned to staring blankly at the wall. As old people often do. I'm not sure why he confided all that information in me. I don't think it's because he considered me a friend. It's more likely that he thought of me, well, the same way I think of this tape recorder. Just a stupid object where you can store your thoughts without consequence. You know that hurt the tape recorder's feelings. After some more silence, he eventually spoke up again. He said, My health is failing. I will likely die soon. Good. I will make no attempt to prolong my life. I am retiring as CEO starting tomorrow. My son will be taking over for me. You will be meeting with him from now on. He said nothing else. But I could tell that the meeting was over. That was most likely the last time I'll ever speak with him. Or see him in person. The next time I address someone as Mr. Psycho, I'll be talking to his son. The world's most famous man. Secretly a nationalist with plans for world domination. What is he, Dr. Evil? Harboring a half-century-long grudge. Plans for world domination, huh. boy? Swear. I would tell Swear the media, but it wouldn't matter one bit. Psycho Corp controls everything that the media says or does. Even if I told the world what he confided in me, the media would never run the story. And it would quickly be dismissed as a baseless rumor or crackpot conspiracy theory. <laughs> I guess, in that sense, he really did take over the world. Alright. Damn. We got all the tapes. 1 through 10. All the Headmaster tapes are done. That was a lot to get through. That was a lot to digest. That was basically a Headmaster buffet and now we're full and now we're regretting all of our life's decisions. But now, what I'm gonna do... I'm gonna get this little box cutter, and you know what I do with that, baby girl. That song, God, baby girl, you know what I do with this box cutter. What? But anyway, we're gonna get this freaking Sakubi Dooby Dooby to follow me all the way to the lockers so I can show you all what it's all about. If you guys have never seen my Alphabet Killer Challenge videos, you're not gonna know what stuffing a student into a locker looks like, but I'm about to show you guys right now. So, Scooby Dooby Doo box cutter for your bitches! Uh. And then pick him up. Be. Oh, God. Wait, 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 wait. Before we do anything, you put you in the locker. Done? Put her, put her. I mean him. And I know I just said Scooby Dooby Doo box cutter for you, but give me a freaking break, guys. It's now 3.40 in the morning. Last time I told you guys the time, I think I said it was like 3.10 in the morning. It's 30 minutes later. Give me a break, guys. I got nut dust in my eyelids, and I'm still trying to scrape it off. If you don't know what nut dust is, then don't even ask me because I don't even know what it is. All right, let me talk to Kudere, and I'm actually just going to use the knife, guys because it's way easier to conceal that we're gonna ask her to follow us right over here tell her to stop and we gonna hit that from the front i guess i was trying to hit him in the freaking oh goodness gracious come on really two for the price of freaking one i didn't ask for that ain't nobody asked for that oh god you freaking orange haired carrot top shit stain okay hide the body here and then i don't even know what to do at this point do i just end the day and see what happens the police arrive at school the police discover the corpses of Haruda Puresu and Kudere. And they can't locate any murder weapons. 
and this orange-haired carrot cake is accusing me of murder. They don't care what this 5'5 five -five titty sprinkle has to say. All right, you know what? We're just gonna get great value Bijou Mike. What? How did you see that? First of all, you were turned around. Second of all, you only have one freaking eyeball. Third of all, what the hell you doing over here, you freaking Peggy Sue pigtail? Hide that body, and she's not gonna tell nobody. She ain't gonna tell nobody. Okay, she don't snitch. She's loyal, guys. She's for the streets. Remove corpse. I can actually remove corpse? Okay, you can't do that in the alphabet killer challenge. You have to just stick with one body per locker. But we got two bodies right here for these naughty thotties. I'm gonna get rid of the weapon that I used. Then I'm gonna end the day. I have no blood trails anywhere. Nobody saw anything because that girl said she wasn't gonna snitch on nobody. And I believe her. I don't believe that she is snitch. So we're gonna end the day. And let's see what the police say. So it says, while walking around the school, a faculty member discovers a corpse. Okay, so I guess they happen to be opening all the lockers before they leave the school. And now the police are here. So it doesn't matter if you hide the bodies in the lockers. The police are always going to find them out anyway. So I know somebody was going to ask that. So hopefully that answers your question. Let's check out the next new feature. Okay, so I know I mentioned about getting the student council fired and turning them into a regular student. Infochan can actually do that for me. I can fire a student council member. It says, Infochan will get a student fired from the student council. The student will lose their pepper spray and it will become possible to interact with them as if they were a normal student. But I need 25 panty shots to do that. Okay, so I'm going to set bug right here. And then that's going to get me 10 panty shots, right? What Tell do me. you need? Uh, yeah, they gave me 10 panty shots or info points now. All right, set another bug right here. And I'll set one more bug right here. So now we have 30 info points. So what we're going to do, we're going to fire a student council member. And it's going to be the girl that I need to get. Where the hell is she? Okay, so this is the girl that I got to take a picture of. Let's send that. And then we're going to use the service. And it's time to get that ass out of here. So we just got to fire. Psych! The student is distracted right now. You should wait for a better opportunity. What do you mean? She's not even distracted. Okay, wait. I guess what I could do, do it now. Maybe it's because she was looking at me. That's freaking weird if so. Okay, so let's try it again. Let's fire her. I've sent the faculty some fake evidence of wrongdoing. The student has been removed from the council. Now what? Oh, she just looks like that? Okay, I thought she wasn't even going to have the clothes on, but I'm going to compliment her. And your uniform looks really nice on you. You're too kind. Thank you. So that's how you get rid of a student council member. I think it's going to be part of the regular gameplay. But for now, it's just in mission mode. There's going to be like some voice lines or whatever. But that's pretty much it for this update of Yandere Simulator. There was new headmaster tapes. You can now put bodies in lockers outside of the Alphabet Killer Challenge. And we can get student council members fired from the student council. Yandere Dev did say that this is probably the last build before Osana is implemented. So I am hyped up for that because we are going to go ham on those builds. If you guys are ready and excited for me to be playing those Osana Yandere Simulator builds, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. Like, and tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!